my name is Jesper Trier Gissel, uh, and I am a film acting teacher from Denmark. I've been working with film acting since uh, 2007, and after a couple of years of, of, of dappling around in, in very many of the common methods, uh, always with a reference to Stanislavski, obviously I stumbled across Harold Guskin's uh, How to Stop Acting, which sort of completely blew me away and turned everything upside down. Um, and, and I've been, from I read that book, and I strongly recommend you reading that book, from I read that book I've based everything I do on the insights of this particular absolutely ingenious acting coach uh, who sadly passed away uh, last year. Um, I also had the good fortune to actually go study with him a couple of times in New York. Uh, so I had, I've had, what, four sessions with him or something like that. So I'm not one of these people who've been with him for a very long time. Uh, but I've been there, I've been discussing my work with him, and unfortunately he, he seemed to like <laughs> what I was saying. So he actually gave me sort of a written recommendation. Uh, there's a link below if you want to read it, I'm very proud of it. Um, but in his book, uh, he describes something called the breathing thing. Uh, and when you read the book, I mean, you get what it says on the page, but, but being there with a the teacher who demonstrates it is a very, very different, uh, very different thing. Uh, and for that reason, many people have actually asked me uh, if I could demonstrate the breathing thing as taught by Guskin. Now, first and foremost, uh, and Guskin would have said this himself, only Guskin is Guskin. I am not Guskin. I am a guy who sympathizes with Guskin's ideas, who went to work with him, who tried to learn as much as I could from him, and then I took whatever I got back and started working with my own students. So what you're seeing now, uh, I can't tell you that this is what Guskin did. This is what I learned from Guskin and this is what it looks inside my head. And I've worked with my students uh, with this stuff for uh, several years now, uh, to great effect, I might say. But some of you, there may be people out there who work with Guskin saying, no, that's not exactly what he did. That's not exactly the way it is. Uh, this is my version from what I got from Guskins, and that's all anyone can do at this point, perhaps, apart from his wife Sandra, who uh, still teaches in uh, in New York. Uh, so if you can, if you really, really want the real version, you have to go see Sandra in New York, uh, but that's also pretty expensive. Anyway, um, the breathing thing is a technique to conjure emotions, if emotions do not turn up by themselves. Now, ideally, emotions should turn up from your work as an actor, with the material, uh, with you acting with other people, uh, your preparation, all those things ideally ought to be enough for you to break out in whatever emotion is necessary at that particular time. But we also all know that that is not necessarily the case, especially if you have a deadline, especially if you have, if you have a director, uh, several cameras, people waiting for you to be really, really sad. That can be a tricky situation. And therefore there is this little technique called the breathing thing, which Howard Guskin showed me uh, several years back. And I'm trying to, I'm going to try to demonstrate what it is now. Now, breath has actually been sort of a focal point for acting training for many, many years. Uh, I know there's a Brazilian woman who made an entire system where you, if you breathe like this, then you're in love. If you breathe like this, then you're angry. So you can manipulate your feelings because the way we feel, uh, our emotions, um, influence the way we breathe, which means that we can go the other way. We can start breathing in a certain way and then influence our emotions. Uh, now, this is, of course, uh, making things way, way too simple. Uh, that's really simplifying matters. But you can actually manipulate yourself in that way. Uh, and the whole concept of take, uh, or sorry, uh, of the breathing thing is that you try to manipulate a feeling so that you can feel more when you start. Uh, when, when you start acting, if you need to be really, really sad or really, really angry or really, really something. Now, the way it works is as follows. You start focusing on something which makes you sad. Now, you can use tragedy from your own lives if you're so inclined, if you want to. I strongly suggest that you try to make something up. I'm a very, very a uh, strong supporter of the idea of imagination uh, being sort of uh, the main vein of our creativity. Uh, I, I would really rather that my students make up stuff than they use stuff from their real lives. I sometimes slightly condescendingly say that, that actors who base everything they do on their own experiences are a bit like authors who can only write about their own lives. We need imagination to know to create Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, all that stuff. We need, we need things to be bigger than reality. So I would rather that you imagine something, but imagine something which would make you really, 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 really sad. I mean, really sad. 
Um, I could imagine something like my wife leaving me or something like that. That's usually, <laughs> that's usually where I'm going. Um, you do that, then you focus on that, you close your eyes, and then you start stressing your system by breathing violently. Uh, now, you don't, I mean, people usually ask, is it through my nose, is it through my mouth? I really don't care. I think, I think, I'm not even sure exactly what I do when I try to demonstrate. I think I use my nose mostly. But the point is that when you breathe really, really quickly uh, and heavily, you stress your system. Your blood starts flowing. I mean, you, you create flow in your entire body. And even if you do not conjure an emotion, it still looks like you have one. And you always have to remember that it's not the actor's job to have an emotion. It's the actor's job to make sure the audience has an emotion. And if they just accept that you sit there saying stuff, they will fill in the blanks. So the point of this is never that you have to feel a lot. Okay? Many of you, if you try this, will get there. You will feel a lot. But it's not necessary. And if you focus on it, and if you judge yourself on how much you feel, then you're going to fail because you're focusing on the end result and not the exercise in itself. And that's, you know, is a key point. You should always be in the moment, as we always say, right? You should not focusing on the goal. You should be focusing on what you're doing at this particular uh, point. So never focus on having an emotion. If you do that, it doesn't work. Okay. So you dig yourself into whatever thing would make you really sad, and then you stress your system. But then when you do that, you are going to feel that emotion sort of filling your body. You can start feeling sort of a tingling sensation in your body. And what's really important and really ingenious here is that you stop before it bursts through. Uh, and the reason you do that is that, you know, what you do is stop and then you shake it off a bit, you know, look, at, look elsewhere, talk to someone, just get it out of your head. And then you do it again. And you can do this two, three, four times, whatever you need. And, and training officers, of course, I mean, always a good thing. Um, but what that means is that instead of bursting through with emotion immediately, you sort, of, you sort of blow up this bubble inside you, which is ready to burst when you need it. Because very often in scenes, you're not sad from the beginning. Something happens in the scene to make you sad. Which means that you can't start out the scene by being really, really sad. But when you do this exercise, you sort of build up the possibility of something breaking through when you get to that point. Okay, so that means doing the exercise, letting go of everything, acting this scene and trusting that if you simply focus on what goes on, the emotion is going to break through when you need it. Okay, this is not going to work the first time for by far the most of you. You need training. As with all these things, if you just sit down and try it and say, well, that doesn't work, that doesn't work for me, then it's not going to work. You need to try this. You need to practice it a lot. Okay, but I'm going to try to demonstrate it now. Um, I used, um, I just made up a very, very small piece of, uh, just just a little line to work with. What was, what was it? It was something like, um, uh, here, okay. My life didn't turn out the way I expected it to. Now that's just a very, very simple line. The way I just said it, it can mean anything. It can be good, it can be bad. I think at least I haven't seen it from the other side, obviously. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to try to use the same phrase, uh, my life didn't ex uh, turn out the way I expected it to, after having done the breathing thing. Now this is the first take, so I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing what's going to happen when, uh, when, when, when I do this, if it's going to work, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot now, okay? So, focus. My, my life didn't turn out the way uh, I expected it to. And my life didn't turn out the way I expected it to. Now, what's interesting is that I, I don't know how this looks. Uh, this, is, this is how you do it. Uh, what usually happens when I show this stuff to my students is that uh, they don't necessarily feel the difference. Um, but it's very, very apparent for people outside that something 
was different. They feel it more, even if they can't say exactly what it is. And that creates drama because it creates mystery. You keep thinking, why was that different? Why did they do it in that way? And then they can't stop looking. The whole trick to acting is not serving sort of a complete homogenous spectacle as to what the audience is supposed to uh, is, is supposed to deduct from what they're seeing. The audience are supposed to be kept, you know, on, on, on the brink of their seats by mystery, by, by secrets, by all the stuff they can't actually see, because then they try to start, you know, they, they start trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so I don't know if you could, how much difference you could see from one to the other here, and I'll be interested to see it, uh, to see it myself. But this, in essence, is how the technique works. This, in essence, is what the technique is. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, please uh, state them down in the comments uh, if you want to know more about it. If, if you work with Gus Kin and says, you know, what you're saying is wrong, uh, try doing it uh, this way instead, then please correct me. Uh, I would much rather have a debate on how we do this. I've been using this, uh, as I said before, in my opinion, it needs to great effect uh, with my students. Uh, so you can take it uh, and give it a shot, but always remember that you can't expect all these things to work immediately. Acting tricks training, and, and too many actors just sit, and especially if you don't have a teacher, if you sit at home trying to get better, they sit at home and say, okay, I tried this technique, it doesn't work, I'm just gonna throw that away. Uh, it's not that simple, okay? You need to try again and again and again. I constantly remind my actors, my students, that, that acting is, is not about learning many things. It's about being able to do one thing really, 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 really well. In that way, it's like push-ups. If you do lots of push-ups, you will become good at push-ups. But, I mean, in the beginning, perhaps you can take two, uh, and that's just the way it works. But always, 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 and this is the key thing, always never focus, always never focus, that's brilliant, never focus on the emotion. Always just do what you're supposed to do, and then trust that it will come.